Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. Welcome to a second in our series of interviews with Dr. Nir Barzilai of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. In this video, Dr. Barzilai is going to talk about metformin, rapamycin, and a groundbreaking longevity trial, TAME, targeting aging with metformin, which he is leading. Metformin was chosen for this trial because it's an affordable, safe, and well-studied drug which has been used to treat type 2 diabetes for 60 years and it has also been shown to increase health span and lifespan in animals and humans. Since we did not have time in the interview to cover the basics of the trial, let me briefly introduce TAME here. As we can see here from this chart, which has a logarithmic scale on the y-axis, the risk of getting one of these chronic diseases, heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes or Alzheimer's, goes up a thousand fold as we get older. So the main risk factor is aging. If metformin delays our aging, then can it also delay the onset of all of these diseases? So TAME is a clinical trial to test this hypothesis. It is the first of its kind clinical trial that is testing over 3,000 individuals between the ages of 65 and 75 in a series of nationwide six-year clinical trials at 14 leading research institutes across the US. The trial is revolutionary, not in the drug that it is testing, but in the structure of the trial itself. It is not targeting a single disease, but instead is tracking a group of age-related diseases, heart disease, diabetes, dementia, cancer, and Alzheimer's. As Dr. Barzilai says, metformin is only a tool. The TAME study will serve as a template for a drug approval pathway that is more efficient and less expensive than existing route of seeking approval to target one disease at a time. So the TAME study will be an important milestone for not only longevity in the US, but for the whole world. The progress of this study will open the gates for further clinical trials. And with that, let me start the interview. So what I'd like to do is to turn to uh, metformin and some, some drugs for longevity. Um, so you mentioned metformin as being a drug which uh, could target aging. Could you talk about how, how, it, how it works in the body uh, and why is metformin so effective? Yeah, well, if I tell you how it works from the body, people will turn off the, what? the show now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but uh, remember, remember that I, I said there are eight hallmarks for aging? Yeah. What's interesting, it was published this year in a, a very good journal, Cell Metabolism. Uh, it actually affects all those hallmarks. Mm. It affects all those hallmarks. Uh, um, it, it's a little complex, more complex story, but basically what metformin does, it binds to a complex in the mitochondria that change our uh, sensing for energy. We think that we are kind of uh, calorically restricted and we adjust accordingly. And, um, and, and so on one hand, we have activation of those pathways that are known to be part of aging. I'll throw um, one of them or two of them, mTOR and autophagy. And on the other hand, because the complex, uh, because we inhibit this complex, there's less oxidative stress in the mitochondria. So you get less oxidative stress and less inflammation. Anyhow, that's what it's doing intracellularly uh, simply said, it makes the cell younger, okay? It makes the cell younger. How, how do we know that it works? Well, first of all, it's, um, we look at animal studies and there's lots of animals that you give them metformin and they live longer. This is kind of the interesting thing about aging. Aging is very conserved in evolution. Unlike specific disease, type 2 diabetes or coronary heart disease that most animals don't get, or cancers that are very different than what we get, aging is very similar. It's, you know, the hair and the bones and the muscle and, and the spine and the diseases. And so one of the things for, for me, a test, if a drug really targets aging, is give it to several animals 
And if it's not only a single animal, it probably has a potential to be relevant to humans, okay? Mm. But with, with farming, we're in a totally, totally different place because we know about metformin for 60 years. In fact, it's not 60 years. In the 1940s, metformin, a derivative of metformin, um, was used to protect against flu and, um, and malaria. In other words, they realized the inflammatory, the anti-inflammatory, the immune and anti-inflammatory potential of this drug. And that's when they discovered that they, when they give it to people with diabetes, it's also lower glucose. And then metformin for 60 years is the drug, now the drug of the first drug of choice to people who have diabetes. Um, now, if you give it to people who don't have diabetes, it will prevent diabetes. Okay, that's one age-related disease. Uh, but people on metformin have less cardiovascular disease, have less cancers, all kinds of cancers, have less Alzheimer's. And they also die less. The mortality of diabetic people on metformin is lower than if you don't have diabetes. Okay, metformin is that strong. So if you take the humans all together, the human studies all together, and there are a lot of them, you can see that it protects from several age-related disease and mortality. And that's why for me, metformin is a tool to prove that aging can be targeted because unless we do that, uh, pharmaceuticals cannot develop a drug that doesn't have indication. And, and there's no indication to prevent aging or to target aging. So we need to form one. And that's why we're doing a big study to show in elderly that we're going to shift their health. Okay, they'll be healthy two years longer uh, if they take metformin. Yes, I was gonna ask you about that study. So that's uh, TAME, correct? Um, so correct. Th that's ongoing at the moment. How is, how is well, yeah. You know, you don't know how luck works sometimes, but we had, because, because we're a bunch of scientists that are going to repurpose a generic drug, okay? There's no, no money to be made of that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so we needed funding. And uh, the funding, you know, the government, the government, this is for them too risky. They say, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, if we knew it worked, we don't need to do the study, right? Um, and, and so we were going to American Federation of Aging Research is the one that's sponsoring this study. And they're getting the money from non-for-profit organization. And we have commitment to do this study, which took us years. Um, but you know, now that I look at it, it's lucky that we haven't started a year or two ago because now with the COVID, we would have been in a major, major problem uh, to do this study. We hope to start it in October. I I'm not sure that it'll be possible. There are 14 centers, maybe in some yes and some not. Um, but this is really a crucial, uh, this is a, a, a crucial time and the COVID showed that it's a crucial time to uh, start the study now. I, I should tell you, look, the, can, can I talk about COVID, for example, and make it relevant to our times? Yes, <laughs> because, because one thing we know from China, from the United States, from Italy, from Germany, um, if you're over the age of, eight, of 80, you're almost 200 times more likely to die than if you're uh, uh, the age of 20 from COVID disease. Um, there's no bigger risk factor than aging, okay? People are talking about multimorbidities. Multimorbidities, for me, is how well you age. You know, we age slower or, or faster. There's a biological and chronological age. They're not the same. Mm -hmm. If you're 60 and you have more than two diseases, hey, you're, you're aging fast. <laughs> and if not, you're aging uh, slower. But aging and the biology of aging is really the problem because two of the hallmarks are 
decline, decline in immunity and also inflammation, which are two of the major things we see with, uh, with, with COVID-19. But I want to tie to metformin because uh, there are four studies now that showed a, a little different results, but all very significant that maybe I'll start with the Chinese study because it's from Wuhan. Uh, people on metformin had 25% the mortality of people not on metformin. In other words, four times effect, let's put it this way. Mm. They're four times mm. less likely to die. <laughs> not only that, but people on metformin were hospitalized less. So it prevented hospitalization and it prevented death. And similar studies are from France and two from the United States that are showing uh, the same thing. And I know that there are more in uh, Spain and other places that are coming through. Even in my institution, um, it looks that way though, though we need to uh, recalculate some of the data. So, so my point is that those drugs that are delaying aging are very important and they really should be a tool to uh, increase the immunization of elderly and stop this terrible ageism. But more than that now, I'm concerned about immunization. Most of the immunization that are being developed are not going to be effective for the elderly. Okay, it's not going to work in the elderly, just like the flu doesn't work well in the elderly. Okay, and if it doesn't work for the elderly, you're not going to have an impact on mortality. And if you don't have an impact on mortality, you're not going to open the economy. Okay, and it really it bothers me now. This is really the opportunity. And, and there are studies, by the way, with metformin and with rapamycin, it's another anti-aging drug, that... Uh, if you, if you give it an immunize against the flu, you get less diseases and less uh, hospitalization, less severe diseases and all that. So we need before immunization to defend the host, okay? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter which virus is coming. You have to do it no matter who's coming. It's for the COVID and for the next virus. And it's not only about the immunity you need to really target aging because you want the body not to only be better responsive to immunity and inflammation, but you want to, it to be stronger when you have a severe disease. You want them to survive a severe disease. So it's the whole body that we have to uh, fortify. Yes, and I, I, I'm interested in, in actually in rapamycin as well. But one question on metformin. So metformin, as you say, is it's been around for a long time and it's it's safe because people have been using it for decades. Um, but it's still regulated in the US and the UK. And so it's it's difficult to get, right? Um, do you see any change coming in that? Is that something because you're talking with the regulators quite frequently, I, I understand. Um, so it, is that something you think will be a good thing? Well, I, I think that once we do this TAME study, it, it'll have a huge impact. I, my prediction is after the TAME study, all elderly will be on metformin. <laughs> right. And it'll probably make an impact. But, you know, as I said, metformin for me is a tool. I think there'll be a better drugs and combination of drugs and other things that will... Uh, that, that will happen. And so we'll start realizing faster our capacity to live healthier and longer. Mm. So you did mention rap rapamycin, um, but I understand it's a bit more controversial and, and you can't use it for a long period. It, it has some negative effects, but you are looking right. at something called, you call rapalogs. So I guess that they, things that work like rapamycin, um, could you share anything on that? Is, is that how that's going? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, look, of all the drugs out there, when you give rapamycin to mice or rats, uh, the, it has the biggest effect, okay? If metformin, for example, extend lifespan on average by 7%, health span mm -hmm. by, by few falls, but, but 
lifespan. Uh, rapamycin does it by, you know, 15 to 20 percent. By the way, the longest living group of animals are the ones that are on a combination of rapamycin and metformin. That's 24 percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, rapamycin uh, um, has, it's in human use for transplantation. It's immune modulator after transplantation for several cancers, but it has severe uh, side effects. One of the things that happen in humans, when you give them rapamycin chronically, they become diabetic because it really shuts off one of the pathways that are very sensitive to insulin. This is because this target that's called mTOR has an mTOR that we call C1 and one that it calls C2. And the C1 is the longevity one and the C2 is the metabolic one. And so the Rapalogs is trying to change the ratio between the inhibition of the C1 and C2. And this is a process and a testing that will take a while until we know and know how to use it. And as you suggested, much of the use will be um, maybe once weekly or a week and four weeks off or something like that. You want to uh, get some uh, pulse out there, uh, change the youthfulness of the organ or the system, and then back off before you have severe side effects. Uh, that's how the trial for immunization went. They were treated a few days before the immunization, then they got the flu shot and then they saw what happened to them in response to the flu shot and then how many diseases they had, respiratory diseases they had in the, la in the next year. Interesting. So um, you, you, can I ask how much metformin you take like a day? Yeah, I take 1500 milligram extended release and I take it at night. Okay, interesting. but you know, you can take it anywhere, anytime, split those, not split those. Okay. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. We are honored to have one of the most prominent people in the longevity field, Dr. Barzilai, to share his views on metformin, rapamycin, and the TAME trial on our channel. We shall be following TAME and provide updates on the status. During the current pandemic, the mortality rate of older people is significantly higher than younger people. We totally agree with Dr. Barzilai's insight that no matter which virus is coming next, we need to not only target immunity, we need to target aging as well, because we need to fortify the whole body to respond better to disease. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for notifications of new videos. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.